Hello everyone. The purpose of this video is to show you how to export your portfolio performance from MarketWatch, and then we'll go over how to calculate your portfolio sharp ratio in Excel. Um, so just a note, don't download your stock data until the last day of trading. For you, it'll be after market close on Friday, April 23rd. And this will help you with part four of the stock trading report exit interview assignment. So in order to download your data, first start by going to MarketWatch and downloading your portfolio performance. To do this, you go to the virtual stock exchange on MarketWatch. Once you're on your profile, you'll see four options on the top. One says overview, portfolio, rankings, and settings. You wanna click on portfolio and scroll down to portfolio performance. Just under that heading, you'll see on the right side, there's an option to download. Next, you wanna open your data in Excel. And once you do that, it'll look like what you see here on the screen. So you can ignore this message. And then to fully see the data, uh, you can just put your cursor up top, double click, and it will fix those values here. Um, so once you have your portfolio data open in Excel, the first step is to sort the data. And to do this, we want to select everything other than the first row here. So we can start by here and um, everyone has different methods. You can select this cell and then go to the bottom here, hold the shift key and then press that cell. That's one method. Um, however you want to do it, just make sure you select all of your data. And then after it's highlighted, you can click on data on top. And then once that's open, you want to click on sort. And then under column, we want to sort by date. And then just make sure that the order says oldest to newest. Click OK. So you'll see here that it has um, sorted the data differently than it was previously. And then the next step is to delete the percent return data that we have here. Um, those numbers are not correct. That's showing you the period to date return, but what we want are the daily returns. Let's go through here, top, select that, click delete. And then after you do that, um, what we wanna do is we wanna insert another row here so you can just press on uh, row two and then right click, select insert. After you've inserted that new row, we can go ahead and under net worth, we're going to enter what we started with, which was $100,000. 100,000, that is 10,000. Okay, so once we have that there, we can then go on to calculate the daily return, which is what we want for calculating the sharp ratio. And to do that, you're going to start on uh, this first, the, the second row, not the one that we inserted, but the first row that you have from your data from MarketWatch. And then to do that, you can put equals, and we want to do the Ending balance, and here we're gonna use cell references. So parentheses, the ending balance minus the beginning balance, close the parentheses, divided by the beginning balance. So you'll see here that we have a negative 0.72% return. I mean, then once you do that for the first one, you can just select this here Let's see the cursor changes, right? You have the black plus sign and just drag and drop that throughout your entire data set. And what that does is it calculates the daily return for all of our data. So to calculate the sharp ratio, 
we'll need to calculate the standard deviation of those daily returns. And you can see I've put some notes here. I'll go ahead and delete that for now. Um, your data is not going to have any of this here. Uh, and also won't say sigma. You're just going to have this, this data here that's on the left. Um, but you just want to, below your data, write sigma. And then what we can do is uh, we can calculate the standard deviation of our daily returns. Right. So in order to do that, uh, just put that there so you know what the data is and then select the cell next to it and we can put equals and it's going to be s t d e v dot s right so that is going to tell us uh, the sample standard deviation so we can select that and it will it starts the parentheses and we want to select all of our daily returns. So again, you can drag and drop to include all of those values and then close the parentheses and press enter. So we got 1.18% and that is going to be our standard deviation value. Okay, so now that you have Sigma or your portfolio performance standard deviation, um, there's a couple other factors that we need to gather in order to calculate the Sharpe ratio. And so somewhere in Excel, it could be here to the right, it could be below, really doesn't matter. Um, but you wanna write these out. So you want total return, your risk-free rate, adjusted risk-free rate, standard deviation, which we already calculated. Um, and then below that, you can put Sharpe ratio. And then we can start to find the value of these different factors. Um, so to calculate our total return, we wanna take the, it's gonna be very similar to how we did the daily returns. So equals parentheses, and then this will just be, that's our ending balance minus the $100,000 beginning balance, close the parentheses divided by the 100,000. And then we can convert this to a percentage. So you see our total return is 4.55%. Um, next, to find the risk-free rate, we can go on to FRED and search the five-year treasury constant maturity rate. So I have the website pulled up here. We want the five-year treasury. You can should just be able to type that. It's going to be the first option here, constant maturity rate. Um, so right now I see 0.81. When you look at this, the number may be very close to this, maybe even the same. Um, it should be somewhere around that. So I'm going to use 0.81. Okay, so with this value, we also, we don't want to just use 0.81 because that would be saying that the risk-free rate is 81%. So we want this to be in percentage form, and then it's going to be 0.81%. Um, it puts it to one by default, but you can expand how many decimal, point, decimal points it goes to so that it'll show the correct value. And then the final value that we need to find here is the adjusted risk-free rate. And to do that, you first need to uh, find out how many observations you have, because the adjusted risk-free rate is going to be adjusted for the number of days that you actually held stocks. Um, and so, like I said, this can be calculated by looking at the number of observations you have in Excel. And so for me, I won't count these first two columns, so we have 63 observations. So subtract those first two. So it's gonna be 61 in my case. Um, your number should be very close to this. And then to calculate this, you wanna take um, the risk-free rate 
So we're going to do equals that risk free rate times. And you can put parentheses. You want to do the number of days that you've traded. So in my case, 61 divided by 365 because there are 365 days in a year. It's going to show zero. Let me expand the amount of decimals. So what we have is 0.14% uh, for the adjusted risk-free rate. So what that adjusted risk-free rate tells you um, is it shows what you could have earned if you held a risk-free asset for the number of days you traded. So once we have all of those numbers, we can calculate the Sharpe ratio. And to do that, we can just select this cell here and we want to put the equal sign, parentheses. It's going to be our total return minus the adjusted risk-free rate. You can close the parentheses and then divide that by the standard deviation. That number is not correct. Okay, so what I did wrong is that the 1.18 should not be showing as a percentage. We want the standard deviation here to just be a normal number in Excel. So what we can do is under number, we can change it from a percentage to a general number. And then we want to put 1.18. So you still want to use the same value that you got here for Sigma, except you just don't want it to be showing as a percentage here. Um, and then this will show the correct value. It doesn't need to be that to that many decimals. Two should be fine. So as you can see here, the sharp ratio that I have is 3.74%. Um, and what that tells us is, so the sharp ratio is, is saying that for every standard deviation of risk, uh, we have earned, in my case, 3.74%. Um, so again, this is never showing that for every 3.74% that we earned, uh, that's per unit of risk. The key to performance measurement is looking at returns on a risk adjusted basis. And this tells us who's getting rewarded the most per unit of risk. Um, so once you've calculated all these numbers here, um, this information can help you with part four of the exit interview. And so you just wanna make sure to uh, save the Excel worksheet in case you have to reference back to it in the future.